Okay, I think I'm here. Two greens, yay. I see a few people joining. You guys let me know if you can hear me. We're a little early. Hey, Sue. Hey, Kathy. We're just going to sit around and chat, answer questions, whatever you guys want to talk about until um, we go actually go full live. We have a few minutes. Hey, Catherine. How is everybody doing today? How was Father's Day for everybody? Hey, Sue. Sue B. I got Sue B and Sue C. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Oh, is it, Catherine? Yeah, we've been getting those afternoon thunderstorms around here, too. It has not been pretty. Well, it's been pretty, but the storms haven't been. They're isolated and just here and there. I did, Sue. I was feeling a little bit on the puny side yesterday. Um, I didn't get up to go up and see my dad. I didn't want to make him sick. He's 81, and he lives about, he lives close to uh, Bonnie Brandis, uh, who helps me test files. Uh, he's on the Chatsworth, Georgia, close to Chattanooga. I know, Kathy, right? I'm excited, too. Um, if I'm not mistaken, sometime here in July is when it's actually coming. But, I mean, we have to stay peeled. I don't know. It doesn't say exactly when. I don't think. I think I looked at that. We can take a peep over here. Let me switch over so you guys can see. You've cooled down to 93. Yeah, it's really hot here. Let's see. This is a scoring wheel. We can talk about it. I had it up. Anyway, I had a photo up to show people. I'll just close that photo out. Yeah, the um, this is one and two, and the only information I have, guys, is the information that you see here. So I may or may not be able to answer questions about it. I hope I get it at the Mountain Makathon, Sue. I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, I am going. Uh, I have my room. As a matter of fact, um, I'm waiting to hear back from my niece and nephew or my husband's niece and nephew by marriage that we're we're still all family um they're getting me a cost on my ticket so i'll have everything in line once i do that this week i'll be ready to go um the scoring wheel this one here number one it does a single score, and then this one does a double score, from what I understand, um, which is going to help with our 3D projects, especially those like the... My hardest fold are those pillow boxes. I'm thinking it's going to work great for those. Um, in the, the more dimensional, where you're trying to do those dimensional folds uh, from Dreaming Tree and SVG Cuts, um, Let's see. 
the number one, the scoring wheel makes a single, a deep single line score for things like uh, cray paper, cardstock, and acetate, light cardstock. And then the double scoring wheel, it gives it a deep parallel, which is a double line. I guess that would be like you see on some of these card folds. You know how when we fold our boxes and sometimes it kind of breaks down in that score and it gets fuzzy. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Wanda. You guys know what I'm talking about? Where you, you make that fold and it breaks, like especially like on the mat boards, and it breaks the cardstock and it looks fuzzy. It doesn't look smooth. I'm thinking this double scoring wheel will stop that because it'll give us, it, it will fold right in between them, I think. I think that's going to help. Um, again, with the maker, you've got 10 times the pressure. For you guys who, who haven't, who don't have a maker or have not seen one in use, check it out. Go, I mean, you have to you have to play with it somewhere at a, a Joann's or a Michael's if they'll if they don't if they have more than the dummy machine. I think our Hobby Lobby has an actual machine set up out there, but then I do classes there too, so they can see mine working. Hey, Gerald, I've got everything crossed for you, Sue B. Hopefully, you'll get one soon because. I, there's nothing wrong with the air machines. I, I love my air. The only reason I sold my air is because um, my cousin really, really, really wanted a machine, and she couldn't afford a machine, so I sold her mine at a deep discount, and um, they have been absolutely happy with it. It's been a fantastic machine, um, but the maker, the only difference with the maker is it can do a little bit more, so hey, Jamie. You're not late. We're early. We're just chatting, talking about the um, new score blade that's coming. Yeah, Gerald, that's a great thing. I mean, you never know. I mean, machines are mechanical. Sometimes things go wrong. You never know what might happen. Hi, Nancy. Glad to have you from Nebraska. Um, so having a backup machine is not a bad thing. I would still have mine, but... And I'm probably going to get another. I just haven't yet. Um, so that I do have a backup. Because you never know. Something might happen and you're in the middle of doing wedding invites or something like that with a deadline. And having a backup machine is not a bad idea. Even if it's just one of the Explore ones. Something that will cut. So. But yeah, I think that that double scoring will. I don't know. Jamie, what do you think? Like um, on the... The boxes where we use like the craft board and stuff, uh, sometimes it breaks down when we fold it. I think that double score wheel will stop that because we'll be able to fold right in between those two score lines and not break down the, the stock. I really love being able to do the acetate because we just don't get enough fold on the acetate. That's the only reason I don't do more boxes with it. Yeah, Bonnie, I, I, I'm the same way. If I could have two or three machines, I, I probably would. So, but I cannot wait. Um, yeah, it doesn't say on here exactly when the release is. So we're just going to have to keep watching. Yeah, like these dimensional folds here, that's really going to be cool. But let's see, they're saying that the scoring and the double scoring wheel is a quick swap. I think it comes together for $49.99. Yes, for interchangeable use. $49.99. And then if you just want the scoring wheel and quick swap is $39. And then you can get the double wheel for another $20 by itself. So you're better off to get these two and then you have a single wheel replacement uh, for 1999 
but that's only going to be available on Cricut only. Am I reading that right? Did, did I read that right? That you can get it, the scoring and the double scoring for 49 or you can just get the scoring without the double here for $10 less. Am I reading that right? Hi, Kathy. And then you can buy the double separately later if you decide you want it. That's the way I'm reading it. I don't know, uh, Gerald. Like I said, I can only answer what is here in front of us. Um, I don't have it. Um, I am not a product specialist. So they do not send me things like this in advance. Uh, I am trying to get that. I've been trying to get that for a year. Um, maybe one day I'll get it. Um, so that I will get advance notice of these things that I can tell you guys more about. But I haven't used it. Um, but they're saying right here, July 10th, you can get it on HSN. That, I mean, you can get it at that point, but you're not going to get... Um, your free shipping and you're not going to get any discounts. If you wait, I don't know the official, I think they said a few days, it's going to come sometime in July, the end of July. Um, you can, if you wait a few days, get it from um, Cricut.com and then you'll get your access discounts off of it. I don't think the group code's going to work on it, but again, you can throw a pack of paper or something in there and still get free shipping with the group code. Yeah, Kathy, I had one and I sold it. I just didn't use it enough for that. I used it one time for that. And I cut one single project. It didn't have enough, I don't know, I guess bells and whistles for me. Um, and I just didn't use it because myself, I... It, I'm like, if, if I need to do a stamp instead of fussy cutting it, I'm going to stamp it and scan it and then upload it into Design Space and do a thing like that or either upload it, um, create a PNG out of it and take it into Escal and do it and then do it in Design Space. So I just wasn't using it. So that's... But, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the scan and cut. Nothing at all. It, it's perfect and it's quick. It's a little bit quicker process when you want to fussy cut a stamp or enlarge a stamp. Um, and it's great for that um, if you're in a big rush. But to me, the few extra steps and a few more minutes isn't that big of a deal for me to do it. And I needed the real estate in my craft room. Yeah, see, Jamie has one too. That's what she does. It's... Uh, and it's just a matter of preference. I just wasn't using mine enough, but it, it's a good machine for that. It's great for that. Yeah, like Jamie said, it's a major pain for her to, to have to scan it and do all that. To me, it's not that big of a deal. So that's going to be just a, a preference matter. Right, it can stand alone. It can. But the, my major drawback w with it was I couldn't do much in the way of design with it. And that was, that was a drawback for me. That was the main thing that I didn't like about it. Yeah, yeah, I just, I couldn't wrap my head around it, you know, like I said, taking up the real estate that I needed in my craft room um, just for it to be a pair of scissors for me. Right. Yeah, Jamie, I think we talked about that too because you had you, you said, you know, it, it's like an expensive pair of scissors as far as design goes, but it is, it is awesome and super fast for scanning and, and enlarging and cutting a stamp so you don't have to have a die for it. It's perfect for that. Yeah, well, you can't do much in the way of design with it. I think their newer one that they just came out with 
has a little bit more design capability. I haven't really looked into it much, but I think it has um I think it has a little bit more design uh capabilities to it now. So but yeah, you guys watch uh, July 10th. That's coming on HSN uh, shortly after that on uh, Cricut.com. Myself, I'm going to wait and use my access discount on it and not pay shipping because I'll add some glitter tape or something to my cart and use my group code to get free shipping. I don't think we'll get 10% off on it because it's a tool that's going to be in the line of like a new machine. That's why we don't get discounts on those. Just like machines, we don't get discounts on those. Yeah, I, I can wait a few days. And maybe, like like Sue said, maybe I'll get one from the Mountain Makeathon. So if I do, then I'll if I purchase one, I'll do a giveaway for it. Hi, Patricia. We're just now getting started. We were just discussing the new scoring wheel that's coming. So you guys keep watching. Use the, wait a few days, use the group codes and links and all that good stuff. It's not going to go anywhere before that. A few days never hurts. Oh yeah, Kathy, make sure, make sure you get plenty of space. Whatever you decide on and when you're building your new house for your craft room, add another 10 feet. <laughs> trust me <laughs> just add another 10 feet I've moved my craft room three times now so and my husband is ready to do the upstairs for it so you never you're gonna need more space than you plan for all right guys let's go over to I don't know winter winter chicken dinner Uh, <laughs> or should we, let's go over, um, a couple of things first with the project camera. Let me go over there and we'll talk about a couple of things first. Okay. Today, tonight's winter, winter chicken dinner, just so I can get this out of the way. I still haven't got any million dollar bars. They're supposed to be coming. So we have a substitute. Chocolate's chocolate, right? So that's what is coming with winter, winter chicken dinner. And then the winner is also going to get a choice of two of these confetti dies. We have stars, we have the clovers and flowers, we have the two size butterfly, the double hearts, the kissy kissy lips, and the XOs. XOs. So you'll get a choice of two of those for winter, winter chicken dinner. Yours was delicious. <laughs> All right, a couple of projects. This is the project that I made last week for Patreons. All of you Patreons out there who subscribe $5 or pledge $5 or more a month have access to this file. But I wanted to cover a couple of things with it with you guys because Jamie made one and she ran into the same issue as I did. And I'm going to kind of try to explain what it is. Make your inner box and lid first. Okay? Make that first and then make this piece. Just because you need to measure the height of your box because everybody's chipboard is going to acclimate differently. The file is set up for the thickness of the chipboard at 2.4 millimeter, but if yours is a little less than that, a little bit more than that, you'll need to go in and change the height of these two pieces in the file. So if yours comes out to be an inch and a half rather than an inch point uh, and three quarters or 0.75, then you'll need to adjust these two end pieces to get that height. It should not affect the length and the width 
that should not be affected. But your height, because of how much this swells, will be affected because the bottom piece will affect a little bit and then this top piece will affect a little bit. And, and the difference of them swelling will cause your box not to fit into the slide portion. So if you are making this box, make the inner box first, measure it, and make sure you have 0.10 to 0.15 height difference on this. So if this is, if you measure your box and it is 1.75 inches or one and three quarters inches, you're going to have to add 0.15 to that. I'm going to say 0.15 and make it 1.90 in the height of this piece because you're going to also have the height of your card stocks that go on here so and on, and on the bottom so if you use a thicker card stock that is also going to affect it um, it's a really neat box but I did find mine fit very 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 snugly I could barely get it into that box into that sleeve even after I made it a third time because I bumped I bumped it I didn't a lot for its swelling on the first one so then I changed the width of this to a lot for that and then I bumped it and accidentally changed the size of it but I noticed that it was it still fit and I fixed the file and I noticed that it was really snug, but you can see how that that is going in and out of there really easily, but not easily enough for it to just fall out when I lift it up. And that's what you want. Because if somebody picks it up, you don't want it to just hit the floor. So you want it to be a little snug. And I, like I said, if it barely fits in there while when it's wet from all the gluing, once it dries a couple of days, it's going to shrink up just a little bit and give you that play that you need and it will go in and out very easily at that point. So that was just something that I wanted to go over for all my patrons who have access to this file or who will gain access to this file next month. I just wanted you to have a heads up and I did put those notes into the file. So make sure you check it. Build the inner box first, check your height, and change it accordingly. And you'll only need to change these two end pieces. Yeah, and it's a really cute um, slider box, too. I, I found that was just a teeny tiny jewelry box that I saw on, I think it was Pinterest. I don't even know. And I was like, hey, I think I want to make that a little bit bigger and, and make that. So that's how that, was, that file came about. It was just a photo I saw. Next, let's see. And in tonight's files, guys, all of these files are in here. Uh, I took the ribbon off of this because you don't need it unless you have your chips and everything in there. And I took those out just because I didn't want them sitting in there getting old. Um, this is our personalized box. I did put the file in the notes. Let me see if I can grab that for you guys here. They are in the, it's in the, show more of the description of the video, but the file number is 97441906. I've already customized it for you guys. Um, and you can run your pinwheel through the acetate like I did if you want to, but you don't have to, because last week we discussed making some things for the 4th of July um, for our tablescapes and picnics and things of that nature. You need to write directions out, Kathy. Um, I have a video on putting this box together. It says Merry Christmas on it. It's the same exact box. It is the exact same box. It goes together exactly the same way. But we'll cover it. I'll, I'll pull it up over here and we'll cover it as well. Um, I just want to show what's in it first. Of course, I did my lid, put it all together, and then you have room for napkins. And a little plate and I will confess my plate 
was a little snug, so I did a little trim all the way around just so it would fit in and out easier. And then I put a couple of straws in there, and I wrapped up some cutlery in a red, white, and blue napkin. And then I made, oh, my washi tape is coming off. I had to bust this open to take photos. But um, I put little condiments inside little paper bags so that they have everything. So if you have like a large family, you can pack your bread and your chips in here with all of your little condiment stuff. And I put this in there just so it would be pretty from the outside this way through the window. But of course you can get more room if you put it over the sandwich and the chips upside down. And then put your lid on. Then you may not need the ribbon to close it. If you do it the other way around or you have a big bag of chips, you may have to run a ribbon around it like I showed in the photo in the groups um, just to keep it snug. But that way you, everybody's got their box of goodies. All they have to do is grab a cold drink out of the cooler and if you put your meat pack in there like little baggies for their sandwiches to keep it cold, they just grab that up, grab their soda, and then they can go sit on the blanket or the picnic table and they have their little picnic with them. That way the lines, everybody's not standing there waiting on everybody to get their bread out, get their condiments on the sandwich and things like that. That way they have more time to celebrate and converse together. So that was that little trick. And then we're going to go over. I went ahead and made the wreath, the rosette wreath. And I know that it's not going to show up well on this camera because I don't know if I can get enough height for you guys. But it, it turned out to be about... I don't know, 16 by 16, something like that approximately. And I had enough rosettes in that file that I could do the back to. So you can either do half of them and not do the back, or you can do all of them and do the back and the front. But when you put them on, put them on the front, and when you're putting them on the back, make sure that you're not putting them where you can see the back side, unless you use the double side paper. To me, it doesn't really matter on the back, but I wanted the front to look really good and I used this is all vinyl on the chipboard right here and I used cardstock to cover the back side I just mirrored it and it is in the file mirrored and then I did my ribbon at the top and I tea stained it so that it wasn't so stark white bright contrast because I was going for that vintage look so tea staining is a great way to do your ribbon. And then I just layered the two by using some ThermaWeb uh, hem. What is it called? Fusible hem, something. Here we go. Heat bond hem. I used that and just applied it to the ribbon like that. That way it won't come apart. It's just like it's sewn, but it's ironed together, so it won't come apart. And all, if you guys notice, all of the papers, these are all it's very inexpensive because I don't keep all of this stuff for the 4th of July. I mean, I'll keep this wreath, but all this other stuff I want. So I used a 40% off coupon and got this Vintage Nation paper just for this. Because that's about the only time that I will use it. Tea staining. Um, Bonnie is, I just made, I took a tea bag and made it just like you would make a cup of coffee um, with my Keurig or you can do it on the stove. You're just going to put a about, I don't know, a quarter cup to a half a cup of water and put a tea bag in there. And then you're going to dip your ribbon in it and let it sit. And then you can rinse it and hang it up in the, I hung mine up in the shower and just let it hang till it dried. But you can, you can dry it with an iron. My hand is itching. I think something bit me. Um, but that's all you do is just do that. You can also use an ink, ink pad or Copic marker 
that will do it that will do basically the same thing it just takes a little bit longer um, like this Copic marker here I can take it and just that's a little dark but you get it it you could just color your ribbon and give it that that'll dry a little bit lighter too but you can give it um, just a little bit of color so it's not such a stark white but that's all that's all I did to it yeah that will take a long time tea staining few seconds it doesn't take long to do that but we're going to cover the tips and tricks for the wreaths and we're going to make firecrackers for our tablescape I've already made two of them but we're going to make the third one and you can put napkins or whatever in there or you can even put a candle I wouldn't light it with it in there but it will weight it down on the table and then after it turns dark you can take the lid off and the candle of course would be a little bit taller and you can light the candle and let those sit there or you can put pop rocks or something like that in there you can put the sparklers or whatever you want to do to have those on your table for a tablescape and we're going to go to um, sh I'm going to show you how we put this together this was a box that was in design space for Christmas and I just kind of redid a little bit of work to it not much just a little bit so that we could make little firecrackers for the table and in the file there are also like Independence Day and firecracker there's some labels I just didn't put them on here yet so let me get you guys the rest of the files and here is the wreath file it is design number 9660653 in case that doesn't want to open on that link and then the firecracker file is 9804485 so that gives you guys all of the files that you will need okay Kathy that's no problem we'll see you in just a little bit we're fixing to play winner winner chicken dinner um, I'm just gonna go over a couple more things right here and then we'll do that first of all the box here is the box it's already set up um, and I put a pinwheel in there in case you couldn't find one at your local Hobby Lobby or Walmart or whatever um, let's transition over so you guys can see that and I'm going to just ungroup it again this is file number 97441906 and here's your little pinwheel and you're just going to on that after it's cut bring these to the center and put your brad in there and you're going to double layer them you're going to do your blue layer and your red layer and that's just straight out of design space I didn't do anything to it um, it's just there and I'm not going to change this file or save it so I'm just going to hide that here's your 4th of July uh, and I cut this, like I said, out of vinyl on mine uh, for the wreath. I used the same thing to make it match the box. I cut the silver out of silver foil. And then I cut the blue and the red out of coordinating paper that went with the wreath. So that's kind of self-explanatory there. And then here's your lid. Once you cut your lid, you're just going to fold if you're looking at your lid just like this I believe it was Kathy that was asking you are going to fold everything away from you and then you're going to glue all four tabs to the inside okay then you're going to take this blue piece which is your foil acetate and you're going to glue it to the inside of the lid so you're going to flip your lid over that's glued together and you're going to glue it right there inside the lid then this frame piece 
and you can use this or not, it's totally up to you, it's going to go on the inside of the lid. Let me just show you guys that really quick because I see a lot of people sticking that on top of the box and it and you could do a frame if you want to pop up and do a little pop of color but this actually goes on the inside of the box and you can see I pushed up mine with my pinwheel there but that's okay but that that frame and it just finishes off so you can't see your glue or tape from your foil acetate okay so that's what that piece does and then you have the box bottom here and I think I've hidden it there's just a square of paper I don't know if I even put it in this file um, you can put a square of paper in the bottom or if you're not using um, craft board I suggest you cut another square of your cardstock and sturdy up the bottom of your box but it goes together exactly the same way as the lid did you're going to fold everything away from you on all your score lines and then you're going to glue the tabs to the inside of the box keeping your corner square and that's all there is to making that box and I do have a video on it it is the Christmas video um, so if you guys need more instruction or uh, a way to put that together that is where that is and if you ask we can get you a link for that from YouTube but it is in the it is in the um, videos and the plate box all of those boxes that have like Merry Christmas and stuff like that on them they're all the same box so just saying a different pattern across the middle then we have the wreath box and we're going to go over uh, some tips and tricks on wreaths and guys I did take these smaller ones these will not fit you can weld these others together and have less gluing but it's going to take you three sheets of paper if you do it that way so therefore there's a little more work especially with these small ones in gluing them together but it takes less paper instead of needing three sheets of your pattern paper you're only going to need one but there are eight different colors so you've got eight different patterns and there is one rosette of each color in each size okay so you've got uh, 8, 16, 16, 32 which are plenty. I did cut one extra blue one for mine and I did do a video showing how this went together. I'm just not doing it on live. So if you guys need instruction past this, there will be a video on it sometime. I'll publish it sometime this week. I just haven't had time to edit it yet. But in this is a large file. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm just going to get rid of these rosettes so I can show you. But you're just going to glue them all end to end. And we're going to go over that. I'm going to show you how they go together and how to do those and tips and tricks here in just a minute. Here is the base. This brown piece, well, I thought I hit ungroup. There we go. The brown piece is your chipboard. And if you don't want to use this, you can use um, maybe something out of the 4th of July that you can just glue to the front. But you can buy these chipboard wreaths without anything in them from your hobby store. So, and it may be a little bit bigger than this. This is 10 and a half inch. That's the max we can get. And it's still made like a 16 inch wreath because by the time that you offset some of those uh, rosettes and stuff, it's going to get bigger. So don't let that scare you. Then this is the cover piece. It will go on the front next just in case you have any you don't want any chipboard popping through between your rosettes and stuff so that's just cut that out of a coordinating paper and glue that to the front of your um, chipboard then this one is mirrored and goes on the back I did not do it this way with the other because there was really no need to waste that cardstock in the center because you can use it for something else and then this was what I cut the blue and red out of paper and then the silver was a foil and I popped it on top in the center of the wreath 
Well, I used gold, I believe, for the background on this one, but that's, you can use whatever you want. And that's all there is to the wreath. And I'm going to close that one out. And we'll play winter, winter chicken dinner before we do our firecracker and our rosette tips. Has anybody got any questions on anything we've covered so far or any of design space questions or project issues? As always, you guys go ahead and ask those at any time. We'll stop and cover those um, before we leave the video. So make sure if you have a question, you ask it. Now's the time so we can show you uh, right here on the screen exactly what you need to do if you're having a design space issue. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Wait for the 3, 2, 1, go count before you post. Anybody that posts before that isn't qualified to win. So, let's see. I have, an access, I have access, but I used an image that is not an access image. It doesn't have a green A. If I purchase this image to use on my project, the following rule applies. One, I have to buy this image every time I want to. Oops, I got jumped on there. I don't know what made that jump. I have to buy this image every time I want to use it. Or two, I own the image and I can use it in all my projects at no additional charge. Or three, I have access so there is never a charge for any image. Three, two, one, go. Yay, Wanda Kelly! That's right. Once you purchase an image, it's yours. You can use it all you want. Um, number one, you have to buy that. Some people think that when they're being charged for an image, they have to buy it every time they want to cut it. So if they go back in a month and they want to cut another card, they're going to have to buy that again. That is not true. Not true. Number two is correct. Once you make that purchase, you own that image and you can use it in any of your projects at any time without an additional charge. Uh, number three, just because you have access does not mean that every image in Design Space is free. If it does not have a green A and you have access, you will still be prompted to purchase that. The only thing that you do not have to purchase is anything that does have that green A. If you are prompted to make a purchase on something with the green A and you have access, the first thing you want to do is check um, your account for your subscription. So go over to your account details or Cricut Access here and check your expiration date and make sure that you are indeed sub still subscribed. If not, you'll want to su subscribe or contact customer support. If you're still prompted to charge and your subscription is good, log out, log back in, and try again. Uh, sometimes if you just go ahead and hit purchase, it won't actually make you purchase. But the only time that you know you're going to be charged is if you have to enter your password. If you know you own an image, do not enter your password. Contact support if none of the above worked and you tried uh, logging out and doing all that and it still wanted to charge you. Okay. Is that, does that clarify that for everybody that's here? Yes, Bonnie, yours forever. It's in your account forever once you purchase an image. It's yours. And you can see and you will know because if you come over to images, like right here, says I'm subscribed because I have access. It has a green A. It says subscribed. This one, however, is not. It's not part of access. No green A. I am going to be prompted to purchase it. Now, I can design with it all day long. I can insert that image and I can play with it and I can use it and it's never going to charge me. Okay? So, um, I can have that image and design with it all I want, but when I go to cut the first time that I use that, it's going to ask me to pay for that image. Um, so you'll see subscribe, subscribed, and if I were to purchase this, this one would say purchased. 
What happens if I own Indie Art Cartridge? It says purchased here instead of subscribed, even though it has a green A. So that's how you can tell. If you own it, and if you have access, it's going to have a green A and say subscribed. If you own the cartridge that it's on, it's going to have the green A and it's going to say purchased. And if you don't own it, of course, you're going to have to buy it. Did that little tip help everybody too when they're searching for images now? That they know you can tell you own the cartridge or not just simply by if it says subscribed or purchased on it. Now single images will also say purchase, but if you're looking for a cartridge and everything on there says purchase, chances are you own the entire cartridge because this is two different ones. Okay, so that covered winner, winner, chicken dinner, and I'll get that in the mail to you. Wanda, let me know which of these that you want. I'm going to transfer over here in just a second. I want to, yeah, I, I do have that one. That's our firecracker. I don't need all these pages open, so we're going to work on the firecracker one there. But first, let's go over, and I just want to ask Wanda again, let her see. You have stars, you have the clovers and flowers, butterflies, hearts, the lips, and the exos. So you let me know which ones you want, and I'll get those out into the mail for you tomorrow. All right. Let's work on some rosette tips. A lot. This is the way that you're going to have it when it cuts. And I'm not going to put this one together. This is the next to the smallest one. But you've got a little tab on the end. And you're going to fold that tab in a valley. And then all of these little brackets, the way that I remembered was this was a mountain and this was a valley. If you guys can see that. Mountains, valleys. And you're just going to accordion fold all six pieces. And then you are going to, I'll glue one here. Just put a little bit of glue, you don't need a whole lot, on that, and you're just going to line them up after you've got them all accordion folded. And let that kind of dry flat, and then after it has dried, I've got all six of these together here on this one. After you get to the end, you're going to glue it end to end and create a ring. Sorry, I got off page. I couldn't see chat. The hearts, and you get two, Wanda. So, once you've got it glued together, you want to go back where you glued those. And I found that putting a good crease on those where this back piece was. Let me see if I can get you guys lowered down just a little bit and see a little bit better there. Give a good crease on that. Use your bone folder if you need to. But you, if not, it's going to try to pop up on you every single time. Okay? But you're just going to kind of flatten it down and you're going to gather it up. And this is where I had the most trouble. And somebody a couple of weeks ago when we were doing the other rosette, you see how it was popping up there? I didn't fold all of those where I glued it together. Just give it a good fold. 
but then you can pull it in like this and try to glue it. And that was really hard for me to do, especially with the small ones. A lot of people, um, okay, I got you, hearts and butterflies, Wanda. Um, oh, somebody had mentioned using a mayonnaise jar lid. Well, I, mine wouldn't, some of these wouldn't fit in that. So I tried, I'm just going to let that go for now. I tried mason jar lids, and that worked for a couple. I also had a cookie cutter, and that worked great for the large ones. And then this was a styrofoam cup, and I found that it worked great, except the top. I had one of those in there that was just kind of in between sizes, and it didn't want, it was too large for this one, and it was too small for this one. So I was like, okay, and it wouldn't fit these two either. It was a little bit larger than both of those. This one fit this one perfect. I think it was this one perfectly. And it held it down in place for me so that I could use my hot glue and not get my hot glue on me. Um, and that was how I did those. That's how I held my small ones while I glued them. I glued them on top of my Teflon sheet so they wouldn't stick. But you can use a styrofoam cup and it will work and help and let you do those smaller ones. So that works if you have those handy. Of course, they won't work on these guys. These great big ones. These you just have to fight with unless you can find one of these large enough. This worked perfect for me on that off size one that I had because I mean you can run it through there if you've got three or four of these you can set them up for the size rosettes that you want and these are just vent or hose clamps guys they're adjustable. This worked perfect um, because I could do two sizes without clamping this and if I needed to do it for that smaller size you can clamp that down and make it the size you need it. And these come in so many different sizes. So, and I did not put this tip in the video, so unless you're watching this video or here in this live, you're not getting this tip. I'm, I'm, I saved that for you guys tonight. But I'll show you. Here's the one. I glued this one by hand, and I fought it all the way. But I could... When I folded this up, oops, I did that wrong. What I did was I had this in my hand and I just kind of held it and then pulled this out and let it sit there on it, just like that. And it held it in place to glue it. And I did that with several of those that I did on the wreath. It wasn't on this one because this is the one I fought with. And you can see all my glue where it kept bouncing around on me and popping loose. And I got glue all over it. All my others are much cleaner like the top of this one is. Because I had this to hold it for me. And I'll show you how I did that. A tip and trick about gluing these guys. So, with your decorative edge to the outside, flatten it. And I've got it on top of my Teflon sheet here. I'm gonna I have a cordless glue gun. Let me just unplug it. I've had it heating up. And get over here. I'm using hot glue and I just brought it together. Okay. And I don't I think this is the this is the one that is just a little too large for the lids, but works perfectly with this guy. Bingo. He's in there. I've got this on the wrong side, but it's just, I, mean, I can still get it in there. Eh, well, I say I can. It takes a little practice, but you can do it. There you go. And if it's going to pop up on you like that, and trust me, just the weight of that mason jar lid will hold it down for you. So if you have a problem with it being really tight and popping up, that jar lid will hold it down so it doesn't keep popping up out of your way. Yours go flying. That's what mine did too, Bonnie, and I found that this worked the best. And then all I did was take my glue 
and I just dropped for these large ones about four or five squeezes which seems like overkill I know but it really isn't um, use these and I mixed and matched mine on my um, wreath and I just let it sit and cool for a minute because it takes a few minutes for these to dry and then I just started bunching it up just let some of the glue squeeze up and then let it relax and that's just going to get glue all the way up on the top and let it cool off a little bit and then squeeze it in and I just placed one of my discs on the top and I just kept squeezing it in that way it stayed on the top I didn't burn myself then I took the ring off and just squeezed it in no glue burns none of that good junk and it's still not dry it's going to take it a little bit to dry you can let go of it about this time now and just watch it if it starts to spread just give it a squeeze in because that glue is not dry yet and I've got it on my Teflon sheet so when it starts to dry on the back side if it's still sticky and pulling you don't want to take it off you just want to give it a few minutes I was doing mine on my glass desk and it cooled a little bit quicker than it will on a mat and then I just peeled oops still not dry enough see how that's trying to pull and separate that means that glue in the middle is not dry enough yet just give it a few more minutes and it'll peel right off of there yes yeah, so it's working perfect I loved this thing if I could have I would have probably done a bunch of rosettes like this this size if I'd had a chance to go to the hardware store and get a big one because the biggest ones are hard because you can't get your hands you need two hands to do it and the really teeny tiny ones are hard to do the, the medium ones are, are really easy to do you can hold those with your hand and squirt the glue in just holding it just like this and squirt it in but I had a problem with the the larger ones and the really really small ones okay and I'm just gonna peel my sheet off there and then I just took my second disc and covered the back that way you didn't see all of my glue mess from the hot glue and finished it off did you Jamie <laughs> They work perfectly, perfectly. And like I said, if you buy several of them, you can figure out what size you need, and then you can just do that clamp down, and it'll be the same as using a, a lid that you know will fit. But I keep one of the, I kept one of these handy. Like I said, it kept trying. Some of them would try to pop up out of the ring, and if I just sat that right on top of it, even as light as it was, it was enough weight to keep it from doing that. Yes, Wanda, it is a hose clamp. And they come in all sorts of sizes. If you when you buy them at the store, it'll tell you it's um maximum size and I think minimum size. It'll tell you. But this will crank that's what these little slots are. It's where it cranks down. This it clamps into there and it cranks it down. Yeah, they're not expensive. I think I bought I bought these for doing that laundry room sign where I put the jar on that laundry room sign. And um, I think two came in the pack. And it was like maybe, I don't know, two or three bucks. 
but once you have them in your craft room, you know, it's something you can always use. Yeah, there you go. Jamie has. Yeah, it just depends on what size you buy. I don't know what size this one is. But another tip on your rosettes, guys, in case some of you don't know, whatever the width is in your file for the height of that paper, this one is an inch and a half. This is going to make a three inch rosette, approximately. I mean, you've got that little space in the middle, but it's going to make about a three inch rosette when it's finished. This one is 3.75 or three and a half, something like that, about three and a half. And this was the 1.75. So you can double whatever, like I said, two inches, you're going to make a four inch rosette. This is what it came into the file as, and this is what I made to, to uh, adjust my sizes. And it came in at three and a half inches tall, and it made a seven inch rosette. So, and don't worry about the little ends. They're going to get bent, guys, because of working with them. But you can go back and pull them out if it bothers you. Mine didn't bother me at all, but you can just straighten them out. I even did it on the little ones just to be sure. But you can see it's still pretty even though it's some of those ends are pushed in, but it doesn't really matter. I may just go through and trim mine off. Just clip them off. Still makes a pretty rosette. Well, that's what I said too, Bunny. I really hated them uh, because of them popping around. But after I discovered this little thing and doing the hot glue in the center like that and then just peeling it off, I after the my main thing was gluing all the six pieces together and then gluing the end, end to end. That took me longer than anything. Making Actually making the rosette and putting it the glue in it after I did this step was a breeze. It was really fast. Yeah, they're they're very easy to make, and I, I'm I'm finding that I like them. I, I really do. Um, they're great for your tablescapes and stuff like that. You can make these out of red, white, and blue for your firecrackers that we're about to make. So. Tons of things you can do with those and tie everything together using the same paper stack for everything. And that way you've got your whole 4th of July party out of one paper stack. And everything matches. It is, so this is the same thing. I just cut, I bought, I think there were three or four, might have even been five of the big, I want to say... 20 by 20 sheets or something like that uh, from Amazon for $9. And then I took one and cut it up for various things. That way I would have just a small one for small projects and stuff like that for gluing. So, And that's what I use this small piece for is all my hot glue stuff. Yeah. You can use parchment paper if you don't have... Teflon sheet, parchment paper works fine. Uh, like Jamie said, the oven liners, same thing. I wouldn't use wax paper. Um, wax paper is, as we all know, coated with wax, and that's going to get heated up, and then it's going to stick to your project, and the paper's going to tear. So you need parchment or a Teflon or the, cra um, the Cricut uh, protective I'm trying to think. I went blank. The name of that. It's the same as this. It's in there with the uh, Easy Press. The protective sheet. I think that's what they call it. A protective sheet. That'll work too. It's a little bit thicker and it's not as pliable as this. As a matter of fact. I think I have one right now, this is the Cricut one. It's a little thicker. I don't believe I would cut this one either. So, but 
Okay, last but not least, let's do our, oops, didn't mean to bump you guys there. This is the firecracker file. And let me just show you that really quick. Right here, you have your finishing circle, which goes on the inside of your lid. These are your lids. Those are the lid pieces. These pieces are for your fireworks. I cut those out of party foil. And then you have the box bases. And this was a box that was already in design space. It was just a round box. I think they had done something for Christmas with it. And I added or welded on and sliced out the rest of the hook here and made them two, three different heights. This white one is the original and then I welded on and sliced these. And I added some little decorative pieces that can go on the front. This one says Independence Day. You can flatten these for print and cut but you'll have to make them smaller. Um, or you could do print and cut on these pieces just by themselves and then stick the one piece to the front of your firecrackers. So, and that one says 4th of July. But I thought those turned out really cute and they will be cute on the table for a tablescape. Like I said, you could put things in them to weight them down and just have a little decoration on the... You can put your ketchup mustard bottles in them. You have to take the lids off, but there are several things that you can do with these to add to the tablescape for 4th of July. So let's put one together. All right. I might put one of these little rosettes on the front. You never know. Let's go ahead and start with the lid. And I just cut a piece of party foil. I, I ran out of time, so I didn't finish cutting the file when I did the firecracker. So I'm just going to cut one by... This one I cut by hand. This one I cut per the pattern in the file. So both of them work. The first thing you want to do, and I am not going to use that hot glue for this. Just going to art glitter glue, and I am putting it on the front of this flap right here and this is the to remind me of which way this goes because I do them backwards every time if I don't put the glue on them first and I just glued up both sides of the strip and then you're going to kind of twist it Oops, see I was doing it backwards already and you're going to feed those just like that and slip them into one another and then just give it a press down. And that makes like a cylinder. Okay. This is not my box design. I was in a rush. And like I said, I don't keep these types of decoration. Things like the wreath I keep. But I redo this kind of stuff every year. So I'm not using expensive paper on it because I'm not going to throw my Cricut paper in the trash at the end of the day. So that's why I'm using this. And you're just going to fold all of those tabs to the inside. And then you're going to put glue on each one of them. Depending on the humidity where you live, you might be able to get by with a tape runner on these instead of glue. And then just kind of press it in and then go in with your hand and press the tabs to the inside. Just going to hold one and let it get a good hold and dry. I'm just holding it with my finger against the side. And then I'm going to work my way around and get the other tabs. And 
and I can't reach that one. I'm just going to use my use a tool just to press it down, get it to stick to the sides, like so. And that is basically the base, unless you want to put your decoration on the front. Like I said, you could put anything on the front, and I included some into the um, file, but you can use rosettes, whatever you want to do if you want to tie the whole thing together. And then basically the lid is going to be the same. I'm just going to go ahead and fold all my tabs to the inside. But I'm not going to glue that one yet. I am going to, again, glue these tabs. Keep them even, just press them down. Oh yeah, that would be cool, Sue. Some candy and hair ties and things like that for the kids. And I'm just going to kind of trim this up, try to get it a little bit square. But basically, just like the file is, just going to... Since I didn't have time to cut it, I'm just going to hand do this one. It won't be exact, but it'll work. And then I'm just going to cut strips. I probably should be using my fringe scissors for this. I know I have some. It would probably be quicker. If they will cut party foil, I don't know that they will, but we're going to try it. Oh yeah, perfect. Maybe I should have went a little bit longer. There we go. And so now I have my little fringe. And then all I did at that point was just take my scissors and curl my party foil in just different degrees of curl. You can curl it in both directions if you want, but when you fold it, it'll be in both directions, so it doesn't really matter. And you will get some of the peeling with this a little bit. I got more than a little bit. Let me put those to the... My others didn't do that, but the red is doing that. That's weird. I didn't have that happen on the blue or the gold. But that's okay. I don't care if it's silver and red. It doesn't bother me. And then I just rolled it. Like. And you can tape this at this point if you want with just a small piece of tape just to keep it from popping loose. And I did use the shiny cellophane tape so that it wouldn't be as noticeable. And then here's my lid. And there's a hole there. And I, the reason I didn't change that, I put the hole in there. The hole was not there. Is because somebody may want to use something other than party foil. And I'm just putting a small slit in that. And that is the true control knife. And I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a point so I can help thread it through. And I just pushed it in and pulled it through to the side. 
And with it sitting there like that, then I got a piece of tape and I split those just like you would a bread and taped it down. I can get that one to stand up quite as good. So. There, give it a little fold over and it should work. And then you're just going to glue those four tabs to, or all those tabs. Oops, need our finishing piece. You can put this on now or after. I think I'll just drop it in after. That'll help me keep it straight or centered. And then you're just going to hold those tabs in place until they're dry. Make sure they stay even. And in my opinion, there it needs to be shortened just a tiny bit. Like I said, I did not make this file. This was a file that was already in Design Space. But I think this could fit a little bit snugger on there. So if you want to tighten yours up, and it may be because I used a thinner cardstock too. That that could be the reason why. But for temporary, it's okay. And then I just glued in the center. Just to finish that off. And then we have our firecrackers. Like I said, you can put any kind of decor you want on the front of it. Uh, the, I have the Independence Day and the firecrackers and all of that in there. But then you have three different heights for your tablescape. Be careful when you uh, curl your foil. You might want to curl it a different way because it did scrape the red off of there. I don't know why. It didn't do it with the others, and it did it with that one. I'll turn those so you guys can see them. And that's all you... You've never seen any scissors like that? Kathy? These are Martha Stewart fringe scissors. They're perfect for those times when you need to make grass or make confetti but you just it just cuts them perfect little strips Yeah, they might be on, you might be able to get them on Amazon. I don't know if it'll let me post a link or not. You might be able to get them on Amazon or Blitzy. Uh, no, I'm not going to take that one. It'll let me post the Amazon link, but not the other. Okay. And that kind of wraps it up today. Oh, there, there's another pair that Jamie just posted. Herb scissors, yeah. You can do those too. But I believe these are just Martha Stewart. I think I got these on Amazon.
Does anybody have any other questions or anything? For those of you that are still with us, um, Jamie gave me an idea. We were trying to think of what I could do. We are going to make a chip bag cover for chips that go in your 4th of July box. So next week we're doing the chip bags and I just, for the sandwich bags, for the bread, I just bought pre-made um, little treat bags. I have Some of them are clear, some of them are white for those to go in mine. Um, but we're going to make the covers for our chips. And that way you can use that not only for this 4th of July project, but you can use them um, for birthdays and things like that too. Because if you're a Patreon supporter, you already have the Capri Sun Wrap in the exclusive files. If, you're, if you pledge $5 or more a month, that one is already in there. And then I think next week we'll probably wrap up our 4th of July goodies and things that we're doing for that. So if anybody has anything that they want to suggest or projects that they want to know more about, let me know. It can be paper, it can be iron-on, it can be um, anything. doesn't matter. We'll figure something out, a project that we can do in about an hour to an hour and a half. You're welcome, Wanda, and I'll get that out in the mail to you. You said butterflies and hearts. I got those set aside for you. Congratulations on your win. Thank you to Catherine and Jamie and Sue. Uh, appreciate um, you guys very, very much. Thank you for moderating. Thank you, Bonnie, for all the help that you give me whenever I need it. She helps me with projects and helps me decide on some things to do. So does Jamie and Sue. They all do. They all chip in a, a great deal. I thank you. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. I appreciate you. I couldn't do it without you guys either. You guys have a wonderful rest of the week. If you need me, come over to the groups. Message me. You know the drill. And make sure you give me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Y'all have a great night. Thank you.